Hello everyone and welcome to Book of Travels. I am so excited to start this. While I don't expect many people to watch these videos, I am looking forward to being able to rewatch my journey as I go through this game. This first video is just going to be me creating a character because it's quite in depth and I do want to go over all of the options and have a look what there is to uh, to be. Uh, the next videos will then follow probably about 30 minutes to 20 minutes long. They will obviously be gameplay. I am going into this game fairly blind other than what Might and Delight the game creators have posted on their YouTube. I won't know, really know what's happening or sort of how to do a lot of things so if you're also playing in the game just leave comments down below and hopefully I'll see some tips and tricks that might help. The first few videos however will be recorded before the fact. I'll then be posting them all up once the embargoes are So let's start with our first character. We first start off with our form. From what I've seen, these are basically your base that you're working from. A form is a basic wanderer archetype used as a starting template to create a new character. Your chosen form determines a range of options and present characteristics for your wanderer and can also inspire you to roleplay in a certain way. There are several startup forms to choose from, as well as more unique ones that you may discover and unlock on your travels across the Braided Shore. Origin Many different types of people and beings inhabit Braided Shores, Askan folk being the most common. Your origin describes what type of person you are related to. Each type of being has its own strengths and weaknesses. Wind Affinity Every person has a connection to one of the four great winds. Affinity makes the cost of the skills of that wind less, meaning you need fewer skill points to learn it. Askan folk, descended from the people that inhabited the Isles of the Braided Shores since before recorded annals. Your kind is by far the most numerous, naturally adaptive and resourceful. Askan folk have no natural physical weakness or fortitude, but their inherent spirituality makes them more able to master the language of magic. So, this is the Moss Walker. By common norms, unfettered, spirit deep ponderer of purpose, carefree, self paced meanderer. Enforcer. Kind and servile might, generous guardian embrace, responsible armour of others. Like a, uh, almost like a paladin reminds me of. Reachant. See, this game still hasn't quite got all of its art, it's still growing and developing, and this is early access, so, but I'm loving the art style here. Self-styled craftmaster, adept collector of expert learnings, sage authority. The Larker, playful laughter of living, lay about generous jester, bemused adventurer. The Ribbon, magic made familiar and fair, rest depth and mind communion, forever belonging. The Gleaner, a force of one, non-beholden quickster, curious eye. The Good Ward, Safety is innocence, true beast's harmony heart, simple, undemanding purity. I like this one as well. The Dimmed. Widespread wisdom's journey, wise Valkyries of ages? I might be saying that wrong. Sage old guide. The Veiled. Shrouded, whisper spell cloaked, veiled dominion, solitary secret ruler. The Mirtha. Heart-spoken, song-weaver, artful dreamer of gilded moments, joyful mesmerizer. Well, there's a bard for you. The crested, naturally becoming mastery, captain of dignified duty, sophisticated splendor. The weatherer, armoured pilgrim of mastery, scarred at storied journey's end, vanguard storm rider. And background to the moss walker. So, let's have a little look. I think I'm going to go for ribboned background. Whether or not it is a past you cherish or despise, your background affects who you are and will influence your future. Your wanderer's age, gender does not affect gameplay and is solely for any role-playing purposes you choose to pursue when enacting your character. Rural upbringing. Growing up in the farmlands, you learned at an early age how to work the fields, care for livestock and read the shifting of the seasons. Your character background story and other extra character descriptions are free for you to write. These cannot be viewed by other players. So it's purely just for you to express yourself, pop female. I like the rural. Oh, I don't really have a backstory to come up with. Normally do with my D&D characters, but not right now. I think we can leave this. Let's have her story told as she travels. Personality. Besides being a crucial cornerstone of your role-playing experience, 
your wanderer's personality traits will affect a great variety of situations. Positive traits will grant you benefits in certain aspects of your travels and can often, with clever use, be used to your advantage. Your negative traits, on the other hand, may at times disadvantage you or hinder your pursuits. So, let's have a look at some of these. Venturesome. Oh, yeah, the traits that you're able to pick from are decided in part by the form you pick. And I think possibly from your background. I'm not sure, actually. Forgiving. You believe that everyone deserves not only a second chance, but a third one as well. You gain knowledge when someone leaves your group. Peaceful. Guided by your inner compass, you accept yourself and the world around you as they are. I think peaceful. Oh, venturesome and peaceful. Yeah, I think venturesome and peaceful. Oh, I love that. The dyslexic they've actually done with mixed words. Um, I can read it quite well, though. Uh, you have difficulty reading and identifying how speech sounds related to letters and words. Knots and letters are scrambled when reading. Honestly, I've got no problem with that. I can read it perfectly fine. <laughs> Dyslexia often means that it's different for every person. We tend to pick out the letters and make the shape of the word rather than reading the word as it is. It's a weird thing, I can tell you. Yeah, I can read that without a problem. I think I'll pick that one. On to skills. There are many skills for the newly awakened wanderer to find, learn and master. Skills are divided into five categories. Actions, abilities, tea making, knots and passive. Skills can be found and traded or taught to you by other characters and creatures you meet in your travels. You gain the possibility to increase the amount of your skills you can have active as you gather experience and level up. Before being able to use a skill, you must first learn it and then activate it from your skill book. Right click on any skill to learn how the skill works. This is lovely. Knots are basically the spells of this game and teas are the potions. Knots. The tying of a magical knot is the most common magical practice in the braided shore. The gestures of tying and final shape of the knot together with the regents tied into it are what gives a magic knot its power. There are many different kinds of magical knots. Their effects are commonly released instantly upon untying them. Knots are also what braided shore folk use for writing. It is believed that the knot symbols closely relate to the ancient words of making that together with the properties of the plant or mineral regions is what gives them their power. Teas. Serving tea is a common practice all over the braided shore. It is also a craft connected to the mystical arts and magical tea recipes can be acquired throughout the land. Drinking magical or masterfully prepared teas may imbue the drinker with a variety of long-term effects. Abilities. Skills that require cunning, guile or survival instincts are your abilities. These are not magical but may very well mean the difference between life and death on your journey. Passives. These abilities or effects are always active. Actions. These are normal skills that your character can perform like resting or attacking. These skills automatically become equipped with your character so you don't have to pick them here. Talents. Your talents grant you the ability to attempt to overcome challenging endeavours on your journey. So instead of quests you have endeavours in this game game and there are different types of endeavors which need different solutions which are these four actually so you've got social endeavors physical endeavors spiritual endeavors and mechanical endeavors so the social is this is a measure of your social intelligence your ability to garner feelings of fellowship from others to gain their trust to manipulate them physicality this is the measure of your physical prowess as well as your ability to intimidate or inspire by sheer might spirituality this is a measure of your attunement to the spiritual world and strength of your perception into the magical realms mechanics this is a measure of your understanding of mechanical devices and how fluent you are in the language of logic related subjects so let's see my starting mystic's arm highlight ground and draw a line to it for others to see ah woots powder so i'll need to collect these sort of items in order to cast the spells uh, read hearts. They're gold because this is a northern wind, so it will be better for me. An ability enables you to read other travels, finding out their personality traits. That seems interesting. Deep rest. Set your body and mind in deep, rejuvenating, meditative rest. Effect plus one endurance. Effect time active until cancelled. Cooldown 900 seconds. Ah, looks like I can only pick one. I think I'll pick deep rest actually. Talents. Ah, because my class, uh, my form, is more suited for physical and spiritual, that's what it's covering. Ah, I can only put one in one. Let's put in spiritual, I think. Appearance. 
No matter how much energy you put into your own appearance, how you look and how you present yourself is a big part of how others perceive you. Eye colour? You are committed to a life of mastery and dedication. Oh, so eye colour actually means something. So you also like the supportive and adaptive. I like that. It's it's interesting. Oh, wisdom and career. See, there's so many different options here that I want to look at. No, I think actually, deep umber, you are totally committed to living a spiritual and imaginative life. I think that suits this character quite nicely. I'm enjoying how it's developing. Let's listen to the voices. I think I like B. Equipment. Oh yeah, it's rolled, isn't it? You start your journey with a handful of items in your pack and some worn equipment. On your travels, you can strive to get new and better equipment by exploring, trading and overcoming challenges and enemies. There is no coinage or specific currency used in Braided Shore, so mastering the art of trading will be key to your materialistic wealth. Right click on an item to see the approximate value and other details. You cannot carry an infinite amount in your pack. Renting luggage space at the train master's stash and available at most train stations is a good way to store things that you want to keep but don't have immediate use for. Stats and equipment. Besides talents and skills, your character also has four cardinal stats. Force, ward, speed and burden. These affect a variety of things and depend primarily on the equipment you wear, but also certain skills and other effects. Okay, this is interesting. Force will govern mainly by the deadliness of your weapon. When you engage in combat situation, force is the stat that dictates the power of your attacks. Okay, so force is your attack. Ward. Ward is granted mainly by armour and protective equipment. Ward represents how much force you can deflect from your opponent's attack before you start suffering fatal wounds. Ward is armour. Speed is influenced by your burden as well as effects from various equipment. It affects your stamina and your ability to tie knots quickly. In combat, speed hastens your initiative and quickens your attack timer, enabling you to reach higher hitting probability faster. Burden is the antithesis of speed, it makes you slower, increasing the time to tie knots and slows down your initiative. Burden is connected to your encumbrance, particularly armour granting high ward, making you sturdy but sluggish. Okay, so you have to trade off between being able to take hits or being able to quickly deal out hits. Let's roll. So I think I'm going to go with this. It comes with some food, which is quite nice, as well as a travel pillow. We have sweat smelling farmer's clothes. Well, suits our background. Here we have a cloak, grain sack cape. Again, suiting the farmer lifestyle. So yeah, I think I'll go with this. Oh, and of course name. You can't type your name. Instead, you roll for it. I like Ellis. Let's have a little look. I think we'll go with Rehan. And family name? Rehan Karma. I think that'll suit nicely. So let's finish. How did your journey begin? Ah, this is how to decide where you start. If you want to begin playing with a friend on the same server, click the same options above. So I think I was traveling on the land. Let's go west. And that's the first character made. You can have multiple, but we'll just start off with one and see where she goes. You can die in this game. It's apparently fairly hard though. And I have heard that even when you do die, it's still not the end of the story. Hopefully you'll join me for the next video and we'll see where Rehan goes from here. Bye!